What is up, everybody? Welcome to Surviving Rock, Oklahoma. I am your host with the locks that rocks, Adam Richmond, and I don't have video again. Dad gum, but it is because I've got a special guest. What is up, Lynn? How's it going, my friend? <laughs> Not much, dude. We are, uh, we, we missed you last week, but you know, stuff happens. So uh, I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us for surviving Rocklahoma something. Uh, Rocklahoma being something extremely near and dear to both of our hearts. And uh, absolutely. Before we get started, I want to uh, give a huge shout out and a thank you to our sponsors. Uh, first up is DEB Concerts. I wanna rock! And rock he does. Now, Doug is actively booking shows right now, and we've got a couple of great shows coming up, which includes Brett Scallions, formerly of Fuel, uh, featuring local act The Grind. It's going to be hosted by Eddie Trunk. We've also got Lita Ford with Straight Shot, June 26th at the IDL. Now, you can get tickets to either of those by going to DEB Concerts dot com or check out their facebook page deb concerts and uh, you can also check out our other sponsor while you're at it at your service rentals and he is the official provider of restrooms at rocklahoma and we've got some announcements coming up i would assume uh, here in the next couple of weeks to a month or so and usually when those announcements are made that means that uh, those restrooms will start becoming available for you to reserve. So head on over to AYSRentals.com, tell uh, Brett that Adam sent you, and uh, that's about it. Now, before we go ahead and get into the rest of the show, we have a tradition around here. I do it each and every week. I see you guys popping up in the comments. I don't know why it's not showing up in my software, so I'm gonna do my best to make sure we get feed all of these questions and uh so let's all do the f uh do us a, the same thing we do every week crack open this cold one here we go maybe this one won't explode on me like last one did cheers everybody but uh enough of that stuff i've paid the bills um more about our special guest host this week um you we've all heard him on the radio for years and years and he's now got some uh, great qu uh, projects, including a new show that he's on almost every day. And that is Tulsa Rocks with Lynn Hernandez. Lynn Hernandez is with me. How's yes. it going, buddy? Great to be here, Adam. Thank you for having me. Sorry about last week. Um, <laughs> Sunday happens. nights, I'm usually just, you know, getting the kids in and out of the bath, getting them ready for bed and totally spaced on it. So Maybe. I apologize, but yeah, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you, man. Now, um, you've, we've, uh, we've, as I was saying, you've been doing stuff in radio for quite some time, and now you are building up this project along with uh, a great guy that I've had uh, many a conversation with in the last couple of weeks, Chris Kennedy. Uh, can you tell us a little bit if it's about the change going from radio to more of us freelance kind of work. Chris and I uh, started doing this um, project together. It was something that I'd had in the back of my mind for a long time, even before I left KMOD. Um, I wanted to be more socially active, more so, um, internet socially active, that is. And uh, so when I left, the one thing that I really missed the most was talking with listeners in real time a lot of radio is voice tracked these days meaning it's all recorded before you hear it uh sometimes it's voice tracked just a few minutes in advance which i did a lot of, um but uh sometimes it's voice tracked days in advance but anyway the drive through lunch that i did on kmod was voice tracked i used to i used to call it live assist i mean it was the calls came in right then I would record them and play them back just a few minutes later and then include whatever song it was that they requested. And I really miss doing that. So I wanted to do something live and there's a lot of platforms out there 
but Facebook is just what has been around the longest. It's what I, I have a lot of um, followers and friends on Facebook. And so I thought I would just go ahead and, and start using Facebook live. It was every Monday at noon at first. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I decided to do it every day, uh, Monday through Friday at noon. And the noon, you know, I chose noon for a reason. And that's because that's when the drive through lunch started. I thought about doing like a morning show, doing it at, you know, 6 a.m. every morning or 7 a.m. or something like that. But I just, I know me and I, I, I probably wouldn't have stuck with it. Plus I'm, that's time when I have to get my kids up and ready for school. And it's just, it's too much. So Monday while I'm unemployed, noon is a great time for me, if it's right in the middle of my day and, and also with uh, people that are just, you know, doing their um, errands or whatever they have to do, or if they have a lunch break or whatever, and mm-hmm. uh, then they can watch me at noon, just like they could hear me at noon on KMOD. So I decided to start helping out nonprofits. Um, that was the first thing I, I wanted to do because I had a, a nonprofit show on iHeartMedia it was on six of the seven radio stations that the company runs here in Tulsa. And I had a, a long contact list and I really missed talking with them and, and helping support whatever local programs that they have for the community. So I decided to start with that. Of course, music is my first love and I knew I was going to dive into that as well, but I just, you know, just to start this project, I sort of went with what I knew and that was, uh, and, and also wanted to help the community. So I put all those things together and started, um, the Facebook live. And then I started a website, Tulsa rocks.com. And my buddy, Chris and I were talking about all kinds of things that we could do. And, and his, he's really enthused about it. And so am I. So I thought it was a perfect match and he, he loves local music. He's, He's always going out and seeing bands and on his Harley and stuff. And so he, he's a good match. And so by Monday through Friday, Facebook live at noon focuses on the community a lot. And, um, I profit or partner with a nonprofit each week. Uh, this last week was Oklahoma blood Institute. I'm wearing my, my blood t-shirt, my blood drive t-shirt. I gave blood on, on Friday at Mathis Brothers. So, and anyway, next to uh, tomorrow, I'll be picking up trash with the city of Tulsa. It's a sort of a save our streams uh, initiative. So, and then, you know, I just talk about the, the nonprofit, whatever it is I'm doing each day throughout the week, I share things, I share their Facebook posts and it's uh, you know, it's not going to cure cancer, but it's just one little thing that I can do. And if it helps one person, you know, as the cliche goes, then, then I'm happy. And I think I've succeeded. So that's at noon. And then Friday night at eight, uh, Chris and I do our music focused Facebook live video. And that, that also, as you know, Adam, <laughs> cause you came out to our, our event, um, uh, at Cimarron bar two Fridays ago and, I mean, that was awesome. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of technical issues, but you know, it was great to talk to you for a, a good t- amount of time. I've talked to you before, but really not just kick back at a bar with a few beers. And, and uh, so I'm definitely going to lean on you if you don't mind for advice and suggestions on how to do my thing every Friday to every Friday night. But, and Chris is really excited too. He, he knows a lot of bands and, and so Anyway, so that's my Friday, my Facebook Live deal. And then I also share to Twitter and anybody watching right now, if you could please follow me on Twitter at Lynn Hernandez um, or Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Adam, as you know, you know, the the more followers you have, then the the more influence that you have. And since I'm helping nonprofits and that's my whole goal. So it's just sort of a win, win, win. And And hopefully we can all get back together after this damn pandemic is, you know, finally out of our lives to where we can really feel comfortable just going out, going to concerts. I'll be at all the concerts still. Somebody told me, man, I can't believe you're not with KMOD anymore. Rocklahoma is not going to be the same. 
Dude, believe me, I'm going to be in Rocklahoma. <laughs> With Tulsa at Rocks, uh, I will be there at, at Rocklahoma, and, and uh, hopefully we'll be giving away tickets and all that stuff, too. So that's awesome. anyway, so that's my social media platform thing. There's also another thing in the works, and I'm not going to give out the details on, but definitely stay tuned. You bet. Yeah. And uh, once again, I, I do want to applaud you for um, now you, you mentioned the, the pandemic. And I, I think a lot of you're in a situation where a lot of people um, are also find themselves in. So you're kind of in a unique uh, situation to where you can relate, whereas, you know, the pandemic has has had a drastic effect on a lot of businesses, special uh, especially local businesses and local venues and local scenes such as the commu uh, music scene and such. So I want to say m huge kudos to you to taking this um, this uh, unrequested downtime and <laughs> maximizing it to yeah. uh, help support the community and stuff. And that's that's absolutely awesome. And that's that's I think that's the way we should all do because. You know, you've got such a great, um, such a, a passionate following and base that you've accumulated over the years. So to put that forward and to give them back into the community, um, I, I think that's really inspiring to me, um, just on a side note. But uh, we've also, yeah, well, go ahead. I was gonna say every Friday, it's, it's not gonna be every Friday, but um, you know, when I have both my kids, I can't get out. But. Um, every other Friday, Chris and I, Chris Kennedy and I plan on being at a different um, bar um, or a restaurant slash bar. And we want to make it somebody that is a local small business. You know, you're not going to see us at TGI Fridays. Right. We're going to be at the place like Cimarron Bar. We're going to, you know, our first one was at Mr. Lucky's. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if anybody is listening right now, please reach out to me via social media and let me know that you would like to have us. We set up our little, you know, it's a live stream on Facebook. It's not a podcast. Everyone's calling like everything podcast. Podcasts, I think, are usually uh, audio and no video. We have mm -hmm. we have video, right? So, um, but anyway, it's it's a live stream. It's live, live. Yeah. <laughs> so we we'll come out and we'll set up, and at eight o'clock we'll go live. And oh, we usually interview the bar manager, or somebody from the band. You know, some crazy fan in the crowd. We'll give away stuff, and we'll just do you know what I've done for years on KMOD with uh, live broadcasts there. So it's the same thing, uh, only. Mm -hmm. I don't have rules like I had a KMOD, so we can get even crazier and uh, and totally plan on it as the pandemic um, hopefully is going away and <clears throat> and we start to be a little more relaxed and we got that stimulus money, so we're going to go out and we're going to spend it. And so I'm hoping to highlight uh, small businesses, places that I've never been to before. There, Tulsa is really, um, you know, uh, in spite of the pandemic, growing really, really fast and there's some cool chic new uh, places to, to have a cocktail or two that I've never been to but I've heard of so I'm going to start calling these places and um, so yeah small businesses Adam is something that I wanted to also try to support because you know like you said I mean the pandemic uh, I mean it, it got me yeah. <laughs> it got me it got my job you know they didn't hire somebody else to replace me nobody live they hired a voice tracker out of Orlando. So they're paying her just, you know, five grand a year probably for doing just voice tracking. You know, she'll wow. never be in Tulsa. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're not exactly replacing my pos my position. Uh -huh. They're just, you know, they're doing a lot of business. And I don't blame them. I'm not sure. trying to, you know, put blame on them. They're sure. doing what a lot of businesses are doing, just trying to survive. I mean, iHeartMedia filed bankruptcy three years ago, three years, that was before right. the pandemic. And they had been trying to, you know, right the ship ever since then. And then the pandemic hit and it just, you know, made things even worse for, for them. And, and I feel for all the DJs that have lost their jobs because of that. Um, so anyway, small, but you're right, Adam, small businesses is definitely small businesses and nonprofits are um, the folks that I wanted to try to try to help out. You know, I got the time now and, <laughs> and I, and I have the wherewithal and I have the, the list of contacts and I have the 
fan base on social media. So I just sort of put it, you know, I, I just think it's a win, win, win. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, that's awesome, man. And I that's uh, I can't say that I would probably uh, as be as active <laughs> in that situation. <laughs> so uh, and that and I mean, that is uh, oh, and I got I got to assume that that is also you know, I'm a silver lining kind of guy, you know, and every every problem becomes opportunity for whether it be a creativity, um, adapting to a different lifestyle, whatever the case may be. So I, I got to imagine after being in working for in radio where you have contracts, you have certain clauses and stuff that you have to watch what you say you have to do certain things a certain way and it, it's got to be kind of liberating to now be off the chain and now we can see more of mr hernandez yeah and, uh, yeah no it absolutely is so you're you're right that's kind of what i mentioned before you know i don't have any rules now there's no rules on social media right. well i take that back there's some <laughs> but we wouldn't go that far anyway but right so I'm yeah I'm ready to have some fun and and um, and I'm just ready to get out like a lot of people are. I got my second Moderna shot already. Once I flip that calendar to May, I will be you know 95. percent I mean it's not 100 percent protection against the virus, but it's damn good, damn high. And it's, and if we all get the shot, then it makes it even easier to to squeeze this virus out of existence. But yes, um, yes. And- anyway. I think we're we're both uh, of the mind same mindset in in regards to us all doing our part. And you and I seem like we um, we try to avoid the debates, and we're just saying, look, just do whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, I myself have also got the vaccine. I got the Pfizer, and you got the Moderna. And you you went live the other day when you got your Moderna. How was your second shot? I hear that you know the side effects can be kind of rough, especially with the Moderna shot. Um, I didn't have any side effects, zero. Nice. Yeah, no kidding. Because I was I was bracing for it. I've heard from um, numerous people that there's a COVID arm that you know yeah. really you, it really hurt. Your arms are real sore. Mm-hmm. I mean, after you get a flu shot, it sometimes it feels like somebody punched in the arm for right. the rest of the day, but no, I didn't even get that. <laughs> I, I was really blessed in that way. I had planned to have no plans the rest of the day and even the next day. And uh, Adam, I, I came back from getting the shot. You're right. I went live at noon, like I do every Monday through Friday. And I was at uh, the Indian healthcare resource center downtown. Uh, right next to the VFW, which is where they actually had the shots administered. And um, got the shot, it took all of, I mean, there was no line, there wasn't any line. Yeah. And I had a reservation, well, they told me what day to come back, it wasn't exactly a reservation. Right. They said, you can come anytime between, you know, such and such time, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., whatever it is. So, I, but I went at noon, got my shot. Uh, they want you to wait there for 15 minutes just to make sure you don't have any allergic reaction to it. Right. Um, which I didn't. And and just me being me, I was talking to the <laughs> the RNs, I was talking to people there. And and because I, I also write for Tulsa Kids Magazine, I do a weekly blog. And so I wanted some information for my blog on Tuesday. So I was um, interviewing some folks there for my, my blog, but uh, but yeah, no, I didn't have any side effects. I uh, came home. I was like bracing for it. I was drinking lots of water, laying on the couch, and I can see my backyard from my couch. And man, I had weed eating that needed to get done. My son was at school. You know, I was by my just me and my dog, and I just couldn't sit around. I, you know, I felt fine. So I was like, damn it, I have about another about a, two hours left of sunlight. Mm-hmm. for the day and my and i'm going out there i'm grabbing my weed eater <laughs> i'm gonna go out and take care of it because it needs it and uh yeah i mean i weeded in back in my backyard for about an hour and a half and i still i felt fine i took a shower i got in bed i felt fine i woke up the next day i felt fine but i had a friend say he got his shot and felt fine most of the day and then mm-hmm. at night he sort of got the cold chills sure um 
So I was I was bracing for it, but no, nothing ever did. How about you? Um, I with the Pfizer, the first shot, I woke up the next morning with a headache. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing bad. I mean, I, I get occasional migraines, and it wasn't anything even close to comparing to a migraine. And my second shot, I was pretty tired the following day. And again, a slight headache, but nothing bad. You know, I we, we took the uh, Indian Clinic Cure-All 800 mi milligram ibuprofen and just called it a day and just kept kept on trucking. So, yeah, I it's, yeah, you know, it's I, go ahead. I, 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 uh, I took the like I said, I took the Moderna. I got the Moderna uh, first and second shot. I wanted to get the Johnson and Johnson so I could feel baby fresh, but I didn't. Uh, so uh, I, I think it was maybe my feeling of relief mm -hmm. that superseded any other side effects. Maybe that was it. I don't know, but yeah, so I'm very, very relieved that I got it. And uh, thank God never got the coronavirus. Amen. Um, you know, so many people have died from it. It's such a sad thing, but. And um, so far, you still can, even if you get the shot, you still can, you know, they say just like the flu, if you get the coronavirus after you get your vaccine, it just it won't have as uh, harsh of side effects or something like that. I mean, this is true. And I've heard the yeah. same. And it's uh, we, we've got a near and dear friend that's uh, fighting a long recovery. And uh, this this virus is something that you know it, it hits everybody differently so you got to have respect for it and you have to yes. realize that yes you might be lucky enough to get it and have, be as mild as a cold cold but one little thing in your physiology can cause it to be something exponentially worse and have lasting complications so um lynn and i have um as I said, you know, every time we go out, we pretty much have standard protocols. You know, the masks, we advocate for the masks and um, don't judge each other, folks. You know, just do your fair part. Wash your hands. Mind what you touch. You know, be sanitary. Keep the masks on. It helps reduce the spread, but it's not going to prevent it. But if we all do our part, it's going to reduce it. And we're seeing that. We're seeing the trends as uh, things have the curve has not only flattened but went way down and starting to bounce now another thing that lynn and i have in common is we are ad i mean just advocates and huge rocklahoma fans and uh first and foremost now uh, and i, I feel kind of honored because the unofficial rocklahoma podcast has the unofficial mayor of rocklahoma <laughs> so this is just this is a good good uh good show man yeah and yeah absolutely so uh let me let me tell you so let's talk a little bit about rocklahoma sure. so absolutely let's do it we've got a couple of months and who shout out uh as Lynn stated, he he's going to be covering Rocklahoma as much as he can. He's he's got a far-reaching network of connections from a, a long career in radio. So be sure you're checking this this his website out at Tulsa. Is it Tulsa-Rocks.com? Correct. Tulsa-Rocks.com. He's going to have all kinds of content. And same goes for surviving rocklahoma.com. <clears throat> we are just two people who are Rocklahoma nuts. And so you can get your news uh, from us, but always be sure before you take some news from gospel, whether it's coming from me, whether it's coming from my website, my page or anything, take it all with grain of salt. The best place to get your information is from the actual Rocklahoma website or the mm -hmm. Rocklahoma page. That's you know, I can't speak for uh, for Lynn, but that's usually what I echo. That or oh, yeah. media media passes and stuff. There's a lot of rumors that go around in the communities, and yeah. people speculate, and that can lead to misinformation. And we've seen what that does uh, to everything. So make sure that it, before you sp share it as gospel, make sure it has that little blue check mark next to it. And uh, speaking of being legitimate. Our pod, this podcast, folks, thanks to each and every one of you in the comments and everyone who watches it on uh, YouTube or Facebook or listens on uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, all of those things. Uh, we have just now qualified for stars. So you guys may see those stars in this feed as you're watching. And what those are is kind of like Twitch. They have those little tip things. So each of those stars 
those uh, represent cool little things and it helps monetize. So uh, I get more of a little bit of kickback to boost the production. So that's why I call it our show. This is our show, folks. And uh, thank you uh, for Lynn setting on our show and joining us. Now, uh, I was talking about Rocklahoma and uh, trying to get into it before I get all long-winded and <laughs> sidetrack on the squirrel. But, um, you know, we've got just a couple of months. You know, we got, it's going to be Labor Day weekend this year. And it is getting about time for, we see all the other festivals uh, dropping their lineups. So, uh, purely speculation, folks. Remember, neither of us work for AEG Presents. We're not neither of us are employed by Rocklahoma. This is just speculation from two guys who uh, have, tend to have our fingers on the pulse of the media and stuff surrounding Rocklahoma. So, uh, Lynn, do you have any do you have any favorites? Do you have any suspicions that uh, you feel is a mm -hmm. safe bet? Well, I I kind of feel like they would want to bring as many artists as they could from their 2020 lineup, the lineup that never happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, I just, I'm, I'm watching the Slipknot website every day. I'm watching the Stained website every day, Five Figure Death Punch website every day, the three headliners that were scheduled for last year. Um, and they have concerts, they're all on tour. And they have a big hole in their itinerary mm -hmm. around Labor Day weekend. So I don't know. <laughs> it's How just, I know, I'm like you, Adam. It's just, uh, you know, you, you love to pull out your uh, spy cap and just try to figure out who's playing. And, um, but I can tell you that there's some bands I hope are there and, and that, that were on the, the original lineup for last year. And that is Dirty Honey. I hope they're there. I've never seen them. I like them. Um, I like the Hue, which I had never seen. I was excited to see this uh, Mongolian metal band. <laughs> oh my god! And also, um, Papa Roach and Hailstorm are on the lineup, or were, and they both do songs with the Hue. So yeah, I was hoping that they could. Um, I, I was checking that out last year, and I think I don't remember. I think Papa Roach actually had because they, were, they weren't playing on the same night, so they would have to stay. So one of one of them would have to stay over a night. And I think Papa Roach actually had a, another tour night booked the same night as the Hue was playing, so that mm -hmm. wouldn't be possible. Of course, um, I'm not sure about Hailstorm. Anyway, so just little Rocklahoma things like that yeah. uh, happen, and I was hoping that they would happen um, in 2020. So maybe 2021. I don't know. Oh, I hope so. Uh, the Hue, as you said, had an amazing collaboration with Jacoby, and they did a track with Lizzie, I believe. Right. And the last time that Jacoby and was at Rocklahoma with Papa Roach, that was after they did a collab with Mar Maria Brink of "In This Moment" with Gravity, which I love the song, by the way. Yeah. And yeah, she left her meet and greets to go join Jacoby on stage. So we know they like to we they like to yeah. uh, make those guest spots. So I really hope so. And um, I had the fortune of setting down with Dirty Honey, uh, the last Rocklahoma we actually had, which was my inaugural year in the media tent. And so you guys can catch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Surviving Rocklahoma. And uh, you can see my interview with Mark and uh, of Dirty Honey. And super, super cool guys. And I, I just love them bringing back that, that sound. That sound is just, it gets me in all in the right places. Um, so Lynn, now you, I know that usually KMOD has their thing that they do with Rocklahoma. So mm -hmm. does this mean you're going to, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're probably uh, doing what you can to get into the media and stuff with uh, Tulsa rocks. So do we, are, we think we're going to be start seeing more of the Linja out in the campgrounds and uh, mingling with us since you're not going to yeah, be in. Oh, duty sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I totally plan on it. Uh, you know who knows what's going to happen between now and Labor Day, but I totally plan on it. I'm excited about it. Um, Chris Kennedy also is, is psyched about it. So 
-hmm. We already have our contacts made with AEG Presents. And so, you know, I've known those guys since year one. I was there in year one, 2007. Mm -hmm. I was there broadcasting live. Um, Other than my boss at KMOD DC, no one else has been there every single year live from KMOD. So, I, you know, I'm excited to be there again. Um, I know Dave Genke real well and Mark Nasol. He's uh, one of the uh, originating partners from Catch the Fever Fest. And um, so I know them all real well. And when I went to, I went out to L.A. the second year when they made the big announcement. And it was pretty badass to fly out to L.A., broadcast live from there on KMOD. Wow. And... You know, Eddie Trunk, Eddie Trunk and I have become really good friends from all those years. Yeah. And uh, the Whiskey A Go Go, we were all set up there. Eddie was there with his show. There were other DJs from out of, around the country set up there. And um, and I I was there by myself. Normally, I have a, a tech crew with me right. helping me set everything up. So I was really nervous <laughs> that I was going to go out there and not figure out how to plug it all in and set it all up. But we... You know, I, I uh, of course, have, had rehearsed how to do all that, and and um, I had my engineer on the phone with me as I was setting it all up. And as a matter of fact, even went one step farther. I was doing my show 10 to 3 from L.A. on the Sunset Strip to announce Rocklahoma, and it was all these awesome 80s hair bands again. Mm-hmm. The first three years, it was that format, and then it changed. But... Um, sorry for this long story <laughs> but it was it was so great just to be there in a, in a capacity a professional capacity of of um of rocking out on kmod it was oh my gosh it was so much fun and i'm doing my show and every once in a while i would grab somebody you know kevin debro or, or somebody from rat to come over and do a, a quick interview that's what they were doing that's why they had us all set up at one location and it just so happened to be the whiskey a go-go which was badass so anyway i got there really early i got there before anybody i had my equipment i was ready to go i literally have knocked on the door and there's nobody there it's not even opening after i get set up and everything's working i'm contacting uh, the engineer back here in Tulsa and everything sounds good on his end. Everything sounds good on my end. I'm good to go. I'm ready, man. I'm so excited. And up on the stage, they had some PA monitor. And I asked one of the guys there, who is anybody going to use those monitors up on the stage? He said, no, man, they're just for the band later tonight. And I said, do you mind if I, if I use one? just as kind of a, 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 a feedback monitor, a cue monitor. And he's like, oh man, I don't give a shit, go ahead. So I contacted our engineer back in Tulsa and I said, is there a way I could plug this in and, and listen to the station here in the Whiskey A Go Go? Because nobody else was doing that. No, None of the other radio stations that were there, there were magazines, there were newspapers, there was TV people, that nobody else was doing that. And I'm like, yeah. And he, he sort of walked me through it to plug it in. Bada bada bing, bada bada boom. And I had KMOD playing in the whiskey a go go. Nice. <laughs> and that's when we were doing Roy D. Mercer every day at noon. So it was so badass. And so I even thought, you know what? And I'm going to take this speaker and I had enough cable to run it out the door on the sidewalk in front of the whiskey and go go and cranked it so the sunset strip was cranking kmod it was just the it was the most badass thing ever i was just i know i i was the only one that cared (laughs) in la but it was i felt like yeah i was bringing tulsa by god to the sunset strip where it all started and and, um Anyway, so that's my Rocklahoma story. So, yeah, absolutely. I plan on being there. I plan on hanging out with you a lot. I will gladly, uh, gladly go- save a spot at the uh, at my table, man. And there's always room at Camp Mardi Gras for the Linja, the unofficial mayor. And uh, so uh, there's a fun thing I like to do whenever I talk about Rocklahoma with my friends. So uh, if we can do three bands, okay. uh, a repeat a safe bet that you you feel like we might see and your long shot, the, your dream act to see at Rocklahoma. 
Um, okay. Are right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I've said this before, and it's no shock to anybody, um, but the first two would be the same band, and that's Hailstorm. Um, I would love to see them. I love seeing them every year. Um, gosh, Adam, you that, that's a hard one because there's so many I would love to see. Candlebox has played so many years. They, Kevin Martin from Candlebox also had a really close relationship with um, uh, one of the guys from AEG. So yeah. w- one year a band had dropped out and they were available. So the guy from AEG that knows and loves Candlebox had him on like that. Um, anyway, so, but Hailstorm is one that I, that one of a band that has played before that I hope plays again. And also is, um, I, I think an easy bet that may play again this year. Um, what was the other one? A long shot band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one you, you, <laughs> that probably happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, a long shot band. Well, Metallica is always a long shot. It's funny how every time I talk about Rock, Oklahoma, and I love doing this. It's just like it's you. It's it's like you asking your fan base the same thing. Mm-hmm. When it, you know, I always like to post on social media. Okay, Rock, Oklahoma. We're so and so many days away. Who would you like to see on the bill? And everybody, well, so many people say Metallica. <laughs> it's just right. <sighs> Uh, that's that's an expensive that's I like just, yeah I, I just don't think that that would happen i've also always said that i would like to see kiss there yeah and the funny thing is is the guys the, the some of the partners of rock Oklahoma are really good friends with doc mcgee um i don't think he manages kiss anymore but he did for many 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 years wow, so yeah uh, anyway, so I thought Kiss would always, I've always thought Kiss would be badass or rock Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, uh, I would say the band I want to see, I can't get, ooh, that is tough now that it's shoes on the other foot. Um, I I can't get enough of Jackal. I just love Jesse James. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I am such an avid Steel Panther fan. So I would say I'd like to say see Steel Panther come back. Um Yes. My safe bet, I would have to... You know what? We've had live come in and almost save the day, not once, but twice. Now, when Motorhead uh, had to drop out because Lemmy got sick, live was on that bit, uh, replaced them, but it tornadoes that Saturday, so we never got live. And then uh, when Chris Cornell passed... Mm. we were supposed to get live fill in and because of tornadoes or, some, or they were double booked and so <laughs> live I might have that backwards because um, uh, I think corn filled in didn't they so anyway uh, I got my bands around but there was two times that live was oh, supposed to it's come it's easy to get you know your rock for homeless mixed up I do all the time <laughs> I mean you act, I mean, I act like there's something that I'm doing a lot of at rock Oklahoma so <laughs> so, um, but I would, I'd love to see live cause I've never seen them, but there's, I missed them a couple of times and my long shot is ACDC. I've, I'm dying to see them. They're they're I, I would say in the same ballpark as Metallica, they are probably just a bit out of reach, but when they see it, I'm going to run around my house screaming like a little girl mm-hmm. and my kids are going to be wondering what the heck is dad doing? But I, I've, they're on my bucket list. I've never seen ACDC, and I want to see them, um, you know, before age kicks in or the the whiskey wears off. One or the other, you know. It's yeah. working for Keith Richards, so. Well, they got, yeah, they got music that's, uh, they got new music out, so they'll be wanting to hit the road and, and tour on it, too. Right. So, um, cross your fingers. Going to the comments, I see a few people talking about the rumor mill is that Mudvayne is reunion, uh, reuniting and they've announced some cons- uh, some summer festivals and they're not just a specific promoter. So Mudvayne's also a possibility too, which we've seen uh, Chad with um, uh, Hell Yeah several years ago. By the yes. way, rest, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. So, 
So while you're while you're talking about that, mm-hmm. I was going to try to pull up their tour itinerary. There you go. And see where they are exactly. You can put that rumor to bed right away. I got to put my pawpaw glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm looking too. We're gonna to find between the two of us, guys. We can find just about any answer when it comes to who's playing where and what all this other stuff. Uh, once again, we are joined by Lynn Hernandez of Tulsa Rocks with Lynn Hernandez. Uh, pl- please support his new page. Uh, includes uh, Tulsa Rocks on Facebook with Lynn Hernandez, as well as his dot com, uh, Lynn or excuse me, um, Tulsa-Rocks.com. A uh, great place to find Lynn's uh, blogs covering uh, nonprofits, charities, and, you know, the local music scene. He's he's everywhere. And just because uh, projects have changed doesn't mean he's slowed down a beat. And the cool thing is, Lynn no longer is uh, has to conform to a chain or anything like that. So we get to <laughs> see... Uh, the real ninja in full effect and you never know he's we may even get him on one of the stripper poles in the campgrounds you never know (laughs) (laughs) not sure why you would want to but i will do my best never say never Um, i used to say never until i ended up on one i was like oh please do not post that on social media Uh, also, folks, remember, you know, uh, with Rocklahoma coming up and the campgrounds, we, we mentioned those. Uh, check out the Rocklahoma Campgrounds Facebook group. I keep a map. So there's Rocklahoma Campgrounds map, and I do it in a, an Excel spreadsheet. Anybody can find it. We list all of the parties, all the events, all of the other stuff, whether it be uh, after party or our annual Naughty Mile that we do to remember all of our Rocklahoma friends and family who... Uh, we've lost along the way, so we try to do one in their honor. So those, all those things can be found on Rocklahoma Campgrounds Map Group. So, uh, Mr. Hernandez, are we uh, getting yes. anywhere with Mudvayne? I I can't find Mudvayne's uh, summer tour list. There, uh-huh. there is uh, an article about them going on tour and announcing some dates, but I couldn't find the dates. Yeah, I see that too. I think it's pretty, I mean, that just broke today. So I don't think that they may not have their website and stuff. Booknot is on tour with Volbeat, Behemoth, and Gohira, oh. if I'm pronouncing them that right. And they are on, there are, they have one day booked on Labor Day weekend, but it is Sunday. So they have the whole week before that off. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could play Saturday or Friday there in Bristow, Virginia on that day right so i'm telling you man it's it's still a possibility i would love to see slipknot friday night open up the whole weekend that would be bad ass slipknot volbeat uh, behemoth and gohira man i've i've yet to catch volbeat i missed volbeat and uh i'm still very much um bummed that i missed lincoln park uh because of the storms and then chester passed away Shortly yeah. after we missed uh, Scott Weiland and the walkabouts, he passed away shortly after. Then we got Soundgarden. I hope they don't stop uh, inviting grunge bands because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the guy who and filled they invi- in. They, invi- they invited Ozzy and he came down with all kinds of issues. <laughs> he fell and broke a hip. He had to throw a rod, man. <laughs> that guy. That, that would be another one. I would love to see him at mm-hmm. Rocklahoma. Oh man, the Steel Panther parody of Ozzy. Oh, I lost it. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, w- we are starting to wind down. Uh, once again, Lynn, I know I've said it a million times, but I really do appreciate you stopping by and uh, joining me here on the show. Uh, for not just myself, but all of the Rocklahoma community, we, we do wish you all the best in the world when it comes to your your projects including Tulsa Rocks with Lynn Hernandez and your your pr- work with the charities and the nonprofits and stuff and just supporting the local music. Uh, I always like to give my guests um, a couple of m- minutes just to promote anything they want to promote or just give them the stage. So uh, Lynn, the stage is yours. Well, I already talked about what I'm up to, but for anybody that just tuned in, 
Um, every Monday through Friday at noon, I do a Facebook live video. So if you're not friends or following me on Facebook yet, please do that. Easy to find me, just Lynn Hernandez. And um, tomorrow I'll be helping out the city of Tulsa. They have a couple of weeks of um, sort of a clean up Tulsa project and I'm happy to do that. I, there's a couple of guys that works for the, um, uh, it's called Save Our Streams, which is basically cleaning up uh, creek beds and stuff like that. And, and they're with the wastewater management department. So um, I've interviewed them for years on KMOD. So I was happy when I saw they were asking for volunteers to help them. I reached out to them right away and I said, dude, uh, let me know what can I do? What can I do for you? So tomorrow at noon, I'll be broadcasting live from an actual cleanup site in East Tulsa. And then the cleanup day is going to be on Friday or Saturday. I'm sorry, I'd have to look at my calendar. But um, anyway, so uh, so that's what I'm doing Monday through Friday at noon. And it's also sort of a little willy nilly every day at noon. Uh, I'll, you know, I have my certain things I want to talk about. And like you, Adam, you know, I have the show ready. It's ready to go. And, and I sort of, sort of jump into it, but um, I'm telling you, that's what I loved about KMOD when I would talk to listeners, you know, every day and be able to reach out to them immediately on the air. And uh, so that's what I do. If, if there's a topic or somebody has a question or anything, uh, I wish I could play music, but it's not that kind of a thing. And, you know, Facebook wouldn't allow that. So anyway, so that's Monday through Friday at noon. And then Friday night at eight o'clock, uh, Tulsa rocks with Lynn Hernandez and my buddy, Chris Kennedy will hit a nightclub. I don't know which one we're going to go to this Friday yet. So if you have any suggestions or whatever, anybody listening, reach out to me and let me know. Um, but that will be Friday night at eight o'clock and that will be live. And uh, um, that's for an hour. And hopefully we don't have any technical issues like <laughs> we did before. <laughs> Adam, I need your, uh, your technical expertise with us. Uh, with, you were there at Cimarron bar that Friday night, which was awesome. Right. Uh, it was that we'll blame it on the storm. You know, there were tornadoes in the area. Yeah. So, and then Tuesdays, um, noon is my deadline for Tulsa Kids Magazine. I, I write a weekly blog for Tulsa Kids. I had had the editor on with me for years. Her name's Betty Casey. Uh, we get along really great. And when I was let go by iHeartMedia, I reached out to her just to let her know that I wasn't going to be, you know, because I, I would reach out to her at least four times a year to let her talk about uh, family friendly things right. on um, on my hot topic show, my public affairs show with KMOD. So I, anyway, I reached out to her and and she said, you know what? I've always wanted um, a sort of a father blog. She said, I have a bunch of blogs for my magazine, but they're all moms. So I, I would love to have your take on the sort of the rock dad, the single dad of two kids of uh, viewpoint on, uh, Tulsa. So she asked me to start writing this blog and I was happy to, and I was a little nervous cause I'd never done anything like that before, but, sure. but I have a lot of fun with it. I talk a lot about rock bands and I mean, that's what she wants, right? The rock star single dad of two kids in Tulsa. Right. Well, I talk a lot about cool. So I'll talk about you, Adam. Yeah. I was on this, uh, uh, streaming podcast talking about rock Lahoma. And, and so it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun doing that. So that's two, that's Tuesday, every Tuesday, and then, man, on, on Thursday afternoon, I do, uh, I'm tutoring children. I'm volunteering now with reading partners every Thursday afternoon. Uh, so that has been a lot of fun. I, it's so fun because I've done that, but I've been a volunteer for Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Child Abuse Network. I've, I've done a lot of volunteering. And when you do volunteering work for with children, you, you get more out of it than they do, or just as much as they do. You get, you just, and it, and uh, it's, um, it's uh, something that I wasn't really planning for mm -hmm. that, you know, after you're done tutoring a, a first grader, 
<laughs> now, for anybody that's watching your podcast, I mean, that are teachers, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it's uh, it's something very rewarding for me. And uh, so I do that on Thursdays. And then other than that, just taking care of my two munchkins all day today. We painted the playroom <laughs> and it took all day. Yeah. <laughs> I feel but like other than that. Yeah. Just, you know, keep it in touch with friends like you. That's awesome. And uh, you, you mentioned him. I, I do want to give another shout out to uh, Chris Kennedy. Uh, if there was anybody that I would say that uh, had to have been a long lost twin of mine it, it would have to be chris this guy we 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 started talking and our minds just worked the exact same way so uh that's uh, as monk used to say it's a blessing and a curse so uh huge shout out to chris thank you so much for taking care of our uh one of tulsa's favorite djs for years and years and years <laughs> and uh, i see some great wonderful things for you guys and uh it is so good to consider consider you part of the podcast family here yeah, in the uh, sure. tulsa yeah, area we're excited about it and there's something in the works too like i yeah. mentioned before i can't give out the details but Definitely stay tuned for it. And I think it's going to be really cool for Tulsa's music scene. Yeah, true story. So um, we will see what the Rocklahoma season uh, brings in the coming weeks. We'll see what kind of uh, how things let up as the pandemic. Hopefully we start to get closer to herd mentality. We see what uh, what we have to pick from and hopefully We'll get uh, get that announcement here in a couple of weeks, and you can find those uh, those announcements and such from either one of us. I would call us both reputable fellas. We'd like to uh, confirm with uh, Sharon and Dave and the Rocklahoma people before we put anything out. Uh, we do uh, encourage everyone to make sure that you verify your sources before you share it as gospel and say, hey, I heard that they're doing this and this and this different this year. Make sure you get it from uh the rocklahoma people or you can you can kind of trust us i think uh depending on what time of day it is i might have had yeah, i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing on friday uh -huh. adam i called rocklahoma and they're there they're, they have the girls are at the box office mm -hmm. monday through saturday they're even there on saturday they can't sell any tickets but they're there to take phone calls if you have any questions 866-310-2288 and uh, I talked to Jamie Lynn, uh, Jamie Sue at Rocklahoma in the box office. And she said that they are going to be um, practicing socially, social distancing, which uh, it's, I still, it will, to, uh, I just don't see how they're going to do it at Rocklahoma. I mean, even if, you, even if you try to, and she didn't know exactly how, I don't want to try to get her in any hot water, but she, but they're, they are going to attempt it, which is uh, admirable, I guess. Uh -huh. They were going to have um, um, upgraded lawn seats. So if you had a GA lawn ticket, you could actually have a seat to sit on or something, or uh -huh. you could get a little bit closer, but they have eliminated that part of it. Oh. Um, from what I'm being told from sure. Rocklahoma. So like you said, until yeah. you actually see a press release from Rocklahoma, <laughs> it's, it'll just be rumors. But yeah, but she's. If anybody had a question, they can call him tomorrow. Eight six six three one zero two two eight eight. This guy. This is why he's the mayor. I don't even know that number memorized. I just tell people to go to the website. So good, man. Good on you. <laughs> that this too. guy. You should get paid to do stuff like this, right? <laughs> yeah. It's been for a long time. <laughs> Amen. So uh, yeah. So I, I once again thanks, Lynn, and. Uh, all of you guys, thank you so much for tuning in and supporting the both Surviving Rocklahoma as well as Tulsa Rocks. You can find Surviving Rocklahoma on iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, anywhere you get your podcast, you can check it out. And this version of this uh this video will be uploaded to the YouTube channel. So please go ahead and head on over to the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, click that little bell. We need to hit a thousand because a thousand subscribers, some cool thing happens. And while you're in the mood to hit subscribe, head on over to Tulsa Rocks and uh, check out Lynn Hernandez and subscribe to his too. So let's, let's get both of us a thousand subscribers because yeah, some really cool great. things happen. Yep. 
so that does it for us this week, guys. Uh, next week we're, uh, we'll be back. I've got some great guests coming up in the coming weeks, uh, including Tori Ruffin of uh, Freak Juice and the, the Juice Makers Lounge. You might have even seen him on the big screen of not one, but two coming to America's playing with the man, the sexual chocolate, Randy Watson, as well <laughs> yeah. as Morris Day, Morris Day in the motherfucking times. So um, <laughs> we also got Eric from uh, Anti-Mortem and Sign of Lives coming up, as well as Sprout the Anti-Hero, all coming up in the next three or four weeks. So come back, sit down with me, bring us a beer, and we will see you next week. But me and Lynn, we both like to say the same thing when we uh, end a video. So, Lynn, let's do it at the same time. As, ne as always, folks, rock on. <laughs>